Dracula, starring Frank Langella and is directed by John Bedham. It follows the same patterns that you would expect from a Dracula film. You know, Dracula shows up and he buys his property slash castle from, um, from Jonathan Harker. There are a lot of characters that are flip-flopped or change roles in this movie. Like, for instance, um, Mina is the first person to be killed off by Dracula in the novel. It's Lucy, and Mina is also the daughter of Van Helsing, and that's definitely not the case in the Dracula novel. And then Lucy is the one that falls prey to Dracula's charms later on in the film. This movie is a more romantic take to the character, uh, both in the casting of Franklin Gulla and the style that it's filmed in. It is still a horror movie, like still gothic horror, but there are romantic elements to it. And I think that's what makes it unique. And it's, I believe that this is the first time that Dracula was made to be a little bit more sympathetic and a little bit more romantic and ironically humanizing him a little bit more. And I think that is a credit to the writers, the director and Langella's performance, because you could see yourself getting along with this Dracula. Like, if he wasn't sucking people's blood, he seems like a renaissance man. And that's the way that Frank Langella has described his Dracula in interviews as a renaissance man with a problem. I mean, I think that there is a, a slight tragedy to this Dracula because there are, con there are conversations he has throughout the film where he says stuff like, children of the night, what sad music they make. And you get a sense that he's longing for a, a partner and an equal, and he kind of finds that in Lucy, because Lucy is immune to his charms at first, and that's kind of what fascinates him about her initially, because she's a strong-willed person, and she is kind of a person that thinks for herself, so, you know, Dracula's normal means of using supernatural hypnotism doesn't really work on her until she falls for him as a person first. And I also really, I love the dialogue in this movie. And it's just so well written and so well acted. I think one of my favorite scenes is when Lucy and Dracula meet for the first time and they're kind of at a dinner party. And Lucy is just talking about, oh, I, I just love to be frightened. I love the night. And Dracula's like, oh, really? Like, is that so? It's, I mean, Frank Langella's delivery is so much better than mine, obviously. But I just, it's, there's all sorts of stuff like that in there. And this is a universal Dracula. And I know that John Bedham really had to fight for his vision of the film because for so many years up to then they had the Christopher Lee version, which I really love, but the Christopher Lee was more of a monster than a man. Like he was definitely a creature of the night. Whereas again, Langella's performance is more humanizing. You never actually see Langella's Dracula have fangs. Like, he hides it so easily. And it's funny, I didn't even realize it until I watched the movie for a second time that he never shows the fangs. There's no blood dripping off his face. It's very much like the Lugosi version. Like, Bela Lugosi, you never see him with fangs either. And it's just so funny because I could have sworn that there are fangs in the movie. I mean, the people that he turns into vampires get fangs, and you assume that Dracula has fangs, but you never actually see them. And I think that adds to the the reserve that this version has and why it is in its own right creepy, because he comes off as an everyday renaissance man that is a little quirky, but he could get along just fine with the average Joe. Speaking of John Bedham's vision, there are two versions of this, film, of this film, and I watched both. The director's cut and the theatrical. The director's cut is almost black and white. Like, the color is so desaturated that it, that all the color on people's skin is drawn out. Really, you only see, like, little hints of color. It's very, it's very creepy. And then, of course, the theatrical version is very colorful. You see reds, you see blues, you see greens, and it's it it almost looks like a Hammer Dracula film in that way. Like it's it's just beautiful. Which is my preferred version? 
I honestly don't know. I've watched both, and I think they both have their flaws because the director's cut, the uh, one that doesn't have that much color at all, it's hard to see stuff at times during the nighttime sequences. It's almost too dark. And that's why I wish that they would have just gone full out black and white for this version because if they'd just gone completely black and white, they could have done some lighting correction maybe in some scenes a little bit better because there are times where I had trouble telling what exactly was going on or it was I don't know like it just it, it took it takes you out of the movie when you're trying to figure shit out when something's supposed to be scary and then the theatrical version I mean it's beautiful to look at it's you can see everything uh, the colors are great it's definitely rom more romantic I would say that's the biggest difference the theatrical version is more romantic the director's cut is more gothic so it's kind of just what your personal taste is I like both versions I don't know which one is my favorite I'll probably have to watch them a couple different times they're both great um, and I think Langella is awesome as Dracula I think that he's he successfully made the character his own um, it's it's an overall good adaptation of not an accurate but it's a good adaptation and a solid tribute to the Bram Stoker's work so Dracula 1979 film have you seen it which version is your preferred preferred version comment below let me know if you like horror and urban fantasy maybe angels and stories about demons and stuff check out my books they're available on ebook and paperback thanks always for watching bye